Hi everybody, this is No Shelf Control. I'm Shannon, thanks for joining me again tonight. Uh, yesterday, I did a video about Kindle Unlimited, the service through Amazon for $9.99, where you can get access to a rolling list of 20 books. There are tons that you can choose from. They're very popular titles, um, and you can pick up to 20 eBooks to have on your list. When you finish one, you pick something else. Um, it is well worth $9.99 to me. I read a lot of eBooks um, and the titles are just great. You can also get access to a few magazines as well. As I mentioned yesterday, I have People Magazine going and a Crochet Magazine, um, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many magazines you can get. It's somewhere between two and five. So, um, but you get that as well as all of the books. So yesterday I went through the first 10 books that are on my Kindle Unlimited list and didn't want to keep you for an additional 10 books. So I thought I would do a separate video today with the remaining 10, just so that you can get a flavor for what the really great books are that are on Kindle Unlimited. And no, I am not a spokesperson for Kindle Unlimited. I just happen to really enjoy it and think you should know about it. So here's the first book on the list today. This is an author that I'm sure many of you know. She's Australian and her name is Leon Moriarty. Um, and the book that I wanna talk about today is Apples Never, Never Fall. I'm sure that some of you know her other books. She wrote Nine Perfect Strangers um, and several others that I've read and can't think of right now. Um, the Husband's Secret, maybe? I think The Husband's Secret is another one. Um, this book, Apples Never Fall, was published September 14th, 2021 by Henry Holt and & Co. And it's 467 pages. And here's what we know about it. From number one New York Times bestselling author Leon Moriarty comes a novel that looks at marriage, siblings, and how the people we love the most can hurt us the deepest. The Delaney family love one another dearly. It's just that sometimes they want to murder each other. If your mother was missing, would you tell the police? Even if the most obvious suspect was your father? This is the dilemma facing the four grown Delaney siblings. The Delaney's are fixtures in their community. The parents, Stan and Joy, are the envy of all of their friends. They're killers on the tennis court, and off it, their chemistry is palpable. So, why are Stan and Joy so miserable? After 50 years of marriage, they finally sold their famed tennis academy and are ready to start what should be the golden years of their lives. The four Delaney children, Amy, Logan, Troy, and Brooke, were tennis stars in their own right. Yet, as their father would tell you, none of them had what it took to go all the way. But that's okay. Now that they're all successful grown-ups and there's the wonderful possibility of grandchildren on the horizon. One night, a stranger named Savannah knocks on Stan and Joy's door, bleeding after a fight with her boyfriend. The Delaney's are more than happy to give her the small kindness she sorely needs. If only that was all she wanted. Later, when Joy goes missing and Savannah is nowhere to be found, the police question the one person who remains, Stan. But for someone who claims to be innocent, he, like many spouses, seems to have a lot to hide. Two of the Delaney children think their father is innocent. Two are not so sure. But as the two sides square off against each other in perhaps their biggest match ever, all of the Delaney's will start to re-examine their shared family history in a very new light. So that's interesting. You've got a long tenured marriage um, that now is in question and the grown children don't know what to think. So um, I think that's very interesting. I think marriages are always fascinating. I think they never quite look the same on the inside as they do on the outside. And I think this is a great uh, exploration of that. So I'm really excited to read it. The next one is a controversial title. It is American Dirt by Janine Cummings. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about why it's controversial if you don't know um, after I read the synopsis. So I love this cover. It's got the sort of um, Hispanic flavored tiles here, but instead of like caulk uh, filling the spaces between the titles, there's barbed wire. So I think that gives you a flavor for what we're looking at. Um, Don Winslow blurbed this book and it says, A Grapes of Wrath for Our Times. It was published January 21st, 2020 by Flatiron Books and it's 459 pages. Here's what we've got. Janine Cummins' American Dirt, the number one New York Times bestseller and Oprah Book Club pick that has sold over 2 million copies is finally available in paperback. 
I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, this is an ebook. <laughs> Lydia lives in Acapulco. She has a son, Luca, the love of her life, and a wonderful husband who is a journalist. And while cracks are beginning to show in Acapulco because of the cartels, Lydia's life is, by and large, fairly comfortable. But after her husband's tell-all profile of the newest drug lord is published, none of their lives will ever be the same. Forced to flee, Lydia and Luca find themselves joining the countless people trying to reach the United States. Lydia soon sees that everyone is running from something, but what exactly are they running to? Now, the controversy that came out about this book is Janine Cummins claimed, I suppose, to have some Latinx heritage or background, and she writes about a Latinx mother and her child running from the cartel in Mexico. And so people um, got very upset about the idea of cultural appropriation and the fact that she shouldn't be writing about something that she hasn't lived. And I have my doubts about that. I think all authors write about things that they haven't lived, that that's why it's called fiction. Now, if she said she lived it um, and then it came out that she didn't, I get what the controversy is about. But if she made up a story about something, I don't think you have to be a Latinx person to write about Latinx people any more than you have to be, you know, a man to write about men or a woman to write about women. Um, I just, I'm not sure what all the hubbub was about, but there was a huge amount of hubbub around this book. Um, and Oprah took a hit for it. Um, people just couldn't get over this story. So um, it's one that bothers me. I don't really get it, um, but I really want to read the book um, and I'll read it despite the idea that there's some cultural appropriation in it um, as I want to see for myself. So that is American Dirt by Janine Cummins. The next one, uh, the third one on my list today is The Storyteller of Casablanca by Fiona Valpi. I love this gorgeous cover with the sunshine and the palm tree. It just looks beautiful. I would love to see Casablanca someday. Uh, this book was published September 21st, 2021 by Lake Union Publishing, and it's 315 pages. In this evocative tale from the best-selling author of The Dressmaker's Gift, a strange new city offers a young girl hope. Can it also offer a lost soul a second chance? Morocco, 1941. With France having fallen to Nazi occupation, 12-year-old Jewish girl Josie has fled with her family to Casablanca, where they await safe passage to America. Life here is as intense as the sun, every sight, smell, and sound overwhelming to the senses in a city filled with extraordinary characters. It's a world away from the trouble back home, and Josie loves it. Seventy years later, another new arrival in the intoxicating port city, Zoe, is struggling with a marriage, her baby daughter, and her new life as an expat in an unfamiliar place. But when she discovers a small wooden box and a diary from the 1940s beneath, beneath the floorboards of her daughter's bedroom, Zoe enters the inner world of young Josie, who once looked out on the same view of the Atlantic Ocean, but who knew a very different Casablanca. It's not long before Zoe begins to see her adopted city through Josie's eyes, but can a new perspective help her turn tragedy into hope and find the comfort she needs to heal her broken heart. So again, we have sort of dueling tales, you know, dueling timelines, two different people who are sharing the same setting, and we'll get to see that setting from both perspectives. Um, I love that kind of story. So we've got a 12-year-old Jewish girl fleeing France um, and a grown woman 70 years later um, who has found her diary, both in Casablanca. So... Uh, very intrigued by that one and ready to check it out. Uh, the next one is very different. This is uh, the fourth one on my list today. This is called This Is How We Do It, a pep talk. And it is an Amazon original story by Kevin Hart. Um, so I read Kevin Hart's memoir and really enjoyed it. I did it on audiobook. It had me cracking up. He makes me laugh. Um, I think he's fantastic. Um, and so I definitely wanted to read something else that he has published. This was published November 1st, 2022, and it is only 66 pages. So it is a story uh, more than a novel, but it's called This Is How We Do It, a pep talk. And here's what we know. Entertainment icon Kevin Hart, the number one New York Times bestselling author of I Can't Make This Up, Life Lessons, shares 15 heartfelt lessons about harnessing your potential in the here and now. You can do it. You've heard this advice before. Yes, of course you have. It's straight out of the self-help Bible. 
But wait, are you ready to hear it from a guy who's made so many mistakes he could fill 18 other books about them? A guy who went to community college for exactly two weeks and earned a degree in nothing? A guy who wore long tights for a marathon? That's this guy, Kevin Hart. He wants to share some lessons he's learned along the way, lessons that helped him to get where he is now. He wants to talk about what isness, cowboying up, and teddy bearing. No idea what those are? Don't worry. That's why you're here. In this funny, heartfelt collection of pep talks, Kevin Hart reveals the power of a positive mindset. In this book, the tables are turned. Kevin Hart isn't just a box office juggernaut and superstar comedian. He's your biggest fan, adapted from The Decision. So um, I'm really excited to read this. It's short. Um, it's Kevin Hart, so it's bound to be funny. He reminds me so much of my brother. They have a similar sense of humor. Um, and so um, just really excited to read it and see what he has to say, especially because I get it as part of my Kindle Unlimited. I don't know that I would spend $26 on a hardcover for 66 pages, but will I take it as part of Kindle Unlimited? Absolutely. So the next book on my list, number five today, is This Place of Wonder by Barbara Neal. And it says, she is the USA Today best-selling author of When We Believed in Memories. This book, This Place of Wonder, was published July 19th, 2022, and it's 316 pages. So here's the synopsis for This Place of Wonder by Barbara O'Neill. In the wake of a personal tragedy, four women face the past, their futures, and each other in a novel of broken ties and healing by the Amazon Charts best-selling author of When We Believed in Mermaids. When famed chef Augustus Beauvais dies, he leaves behind a celebrated reputation and four women grappling with loss, anger, pain, and the question of how the world will turn without him. Meadow, the ex-wife with whom Augustus built an, em an empire and a family, still holds a place for him in her heart, even as she continues to struggle with his infidelities, which ended their 20-year marriage. More unforgiving is Maya, his estranged daughter, who's recently out of rehab, but finally ready to reclaim her life. Nora, his latest girlfriend, sidelined her own career for unexpected love and a life of luxury, both of which are now gone with Augustus. And then there's Rory, Meadow's daughter, the voice of calm and reason in a chorus of discontent. As Meadow, Maya, Nora, and Rory are flung together by tragedy, grief, and secrets yet to be revealed, they must accept or turn away from the legacy of great intentions and bad decisions Augustus left them. And when the circumstances around his death are called into question, their conflicted feelings become even more complicated. But moving forward is the only choice they have, and to do so, they'll need to rely on family, friendship, and inner strength. Set on the stunning, rugged California coast, this place of wonder is an emotional, lush, and empowering story of four women finding their way in a changed world, and what a wondrous journey it will be. So I like that idea. I like the fact that, you know, they're looking at the impact that one of us missing has on, you know, everybody else we touch in our lives. Now, I'll be honest, I wish that it wasn't the man that went missing and, you know, the impact that having the man not be around has on all the women, but still a very interesting premise and um, I'm definitely going to check it out. So that's just me being stroppy. All right. So let's see what the next one is. The sixth one on my list today is The Singing Trees by Boo Walker. And that is the best-selling author of an unfinished story. Now, I have never heard of Boo Walker, but I was very interested in this title. So The Singing Trees was published August 3rd, 2021 by Lake Union Publishing, and it's 429 pages. And here's what I know about it. A young artist forges a path of self-discovery in an enriching novel about forgiving the past and embracing second chances from the best-selling author of an unfinished story. Maine, 1969. After losing her parents in a car accident, aspiring artist Annalisa Mancuso lives with her grandmother and their large Italian family in the stifling factory town of Peyton Mills. Inspired by her mother, whose own artistic dreams disappeared in a damaged marriage, Annalisa is dedicated only to painting. Closed off to love and driven as much by her innate talent as she is the disillusionment of her past, Annalisa just wants to come into her own. 
The first step is leaving Peyton Mills and everything it represents. The next, the inspiring opportunities in the city of Portland and a thriving New England art scene where Annalisa hopes to find her voice. But she meets Thomas, an Ivy League student whose attentions and troubled family upend her pursuits in ways she never imagined possible. As their relationship deepens, Annalisa must balance her dreams against an unexpected love. Until the unraveling of an unforgivable lie. For Annalisa, opening herself up to life and to love is a risk. It might also be the chance she needs to finally become the person and the artist she's meant to be. So again, a coming of age story. Now this is a book I had never heard of. So you can see on, in the Kindle Unlimited sphere, there are lots of very popular titles and then some that will intrigue you that you've never heard about before. So this is one of the ones that I had never heard of. Um, very interested again, there's a secret, it's coming of age. Um, she is an artist uh, from New England and meeting an Ivy Leaguer. And so we'll see what secret his family has and what this unforgivable lie is going to be. So intriguing. Uh, the next one I have, number seven, is Where Wild Peaches Grow by Cade Bentley. And I love this cover. Look at the peaches and it matches her shirt and her you know, her hair, you get this, you know, idea of who the character is going to be. She looks sort of thoughtful, like she's looking up into the sky. I really love the colors um, and, you know, everything about this cover. So, Where Wild Peaches Grow by Cade Bentley. This was published August 30th, 2022. Uh, it's 297 pages. So here we go. In a deeply emotional novel of family, cultural heritage, and forgiveness, estranged sisters wrestle with the choices they've made and confront circumstances beyond their control. Nona, Peaches Davenport, abandoned by the man she loved and betrayed by family, left her Natchez, Mississippi home 15 years ago and never looked back. She's forged a promising future in Chicago as a professor of African American studies. Nona even finds her once closed heart persuaded by a new love but that's all shaken when her father's death forces her to return to everything she's tried to forget. Julia Curtis hasn't forgiven her sister for deserting the family. Just like their mother, Nona walked away from Julia when she needed her most. And Julia doesn't feel guilty for turning to Nona's old flame, Marcus, for comfort. He helped Julia build a new life. She has a child, a career, and a determination to move on from old family wounds. Upon Nona's return to Natchez, a cautious reunion unfolds, and everything Nona and Julia thought they knew about themselves, each other, and those they loved will be tested. Unpacking the truth about why Nona left may finally heal their frayed bond or tear it apart again forever. So something about this, although it doesn't deal with two sisters who are um, pursuing different races, something about where wild peaches grow reminds me of the vanishing half a little bit. And I really loved that. So um, curious, again, we've got secrets that are being uncovered, you know, that it's sort of a theme here of things that I like. Um, so um, again, we've got somebody in two different uh, settings. She's got Chicago and Natchez, Mississippi, and we'll see how the two environments impact the story. So I'm excited about that. The next one is a classic. So uh, as I said, there are lots of opportunities to pick different things from Kindle Unlimited. This one is number eight on my list, and it's called Their Eyes Were Watching God um, by Zora Neale Hurston. And I can't believe I've never read it, but I've never read it. So I'm sure you can't believe it either. The blurb on this one says, there is no book more important to me than this one. And that's by Alice Walker, the author of uh, The Color Purple. So Their Eyes Were Watching God, published May 30th, 2006, so really backlist, um, and this is the 75th anniversary, and uh, well, it would have been the 75th anniversary in 2021, and it's 238 pages. So here we go. It's a very short synopsis. It says, fair and long-legged, independent and articulate, Janie Crawford sets out to be her own person. No mean feat for a black woman in the 30s. Janie's quest for identity takes her through three marriages and into a journey back to her roots. So I know a little bit about this book, but not a lot. I just know that everybody raves about it. It's one of those books that you just have to have read. 
Um, so when I saw it come up on Kindle Unlimited, I grabbed it um, and will definitely be uh, pursuing it. So that's what I've got on Their Eyes Were Watching God. The ninth one on my list is from an author that I love. Um, I've read other books of hers and just fell in love with them. So the idea that there's one out there that I haven't read and that is available through Kindle Unlimited just uh, definitely got my attention. This one is Alice Hoffman and it's called The Dove Keepers. So let's talk a little bit about this cover. She is absolutely gorgeous. I um, mean, she's got these two doves on her shoulders. I know nothing about this time period. So, you know, the way she's dressed, I, I didn't know what to make of it. But you'll see when we get uh, into the synopsis. So The Dove Keepers, published October 4th, 2011 by Simon & Schuster. And it's a hefty 504 pages. So here's what we know. Over five years in the writing, The Dove Keepers is Alice Hoffman's most ambitious and mesmerizing novel, a tour de force of imagination and research set in ancient Israel. Oh. In 70 CE, 900 Jews held out for months against armies of Romans on Masada, a mountain in the Judean desert. According to the ancient historian Josephus, two women and five children survived. Based on this tragic and iconic event, Hoffman's novel is a spellbinding tale of four extraordinarily bold, resourceful, and sensuous women each of whom has come to Masada by a different path. Yael's mother died in childbirth, and her father, an expert assassin, never forgave her for that death. Revka, a village baker's wife, watched the horrifically brutal murder of her daughter by Roman soldiers. She brings to Masada her young grandsons, rendered mute by what they have witnessed. Aziza is a warrior's daughter raised as a boy, a fearless writer and an expert marksman who finds passion with a fellow soldier. Shira, born in Alexandria, is wise in the ways of ancient magic and medicine, a woman with uncanny insight and power. The lives of these four complex and fiercely independent women intersect in the desperate days of the siege. All are dove keepers, and all are also keeping secrets about who they are, where they come from, who fathered them, and whom they love. So again, secrets, but this is historical. I really like the idea that this is something I know nothing about. 70 CE, um, 900 Jews fighting against armies of Romans on Masada. I know nothing about that time period. I know nothing about this fight. Um, and the idea that she has built the story of these four women around that historical event um, and that they are all different and all have stories to tell and secrets to unfold really gets my attention. So... I can't wait to read that one. And the last one on my list today is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone. And it's got the two birds, a cardinal and a blue jay, one upside down from the other. And it was published July 16th, 2019 by Saga Press, and it's 209 pages. And again, a very short synopsis. Um, I, did I say that it was by Max Gladstone? Yeah, I think I did say that. So here we go. Among the ashes of a dying world, an agent of the Commandant finds a letter. It reads, burn before reading. Thus begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents hell-bent on securing the best possible future for their warring factions. Now, what began as a taunt, a battlefield boast, grows into something more, something epic, something romantic something that could change the past and the future, except the discovery of their bond would mean death for each of them. There's still a war going on after all, and someone has to win that war. Ooh, so rival agents that come together and the war is either going to pull them apart or who knows what's gonna happen, but somebody's gonna win and somebody's gonna lose. So I thought that was very interesting um, and chose it as my 20th book for the um, uh, Kindle Unlimited list. Now, there's one more that I want to talk about. So we're going to do 11 today. And that is because this book is on the Kindle Unlimited list, but I already owned it. So I would certainly have taken this one, probably instead of one of the others, um, and wanted to, to let you know about this book just because I already own it and it's a great one. And I wanted you to know it's on the Kindle Unlimited selections list. It's This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. It says, the blurb says, it made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me think. 
and that is blurbed by Leon Moriarty, the New York Times bestselling author of Big Little Lies, who we talked about earlier. So this is how it always is by Lori Frankel. Um, and this is published June 2018 by Flatiron Books, and it's 338 pages. So here's what we've got. This is how a family keeps a secret and how that secret ends up keeping them. This is how a family lives happily ever after until happily ever after becomes complicated. This is how children change and then change the world. This is Claude. He's five years old, the youngest of five brothers and loves peanut butter sandwiches. He also loves wearing a dress and dreams of being a princess. When he grows up, Claude says he wants to be a girl. Rosie and Penn want Claude to be whoever Claude wants to be. They're just not sure they're ready to share that with the world. Soon the entire family is keeping Claude's secret until one day it explodes. This is how it always is, is a novel about revelations, transformations, fairy tales, and family. And it's about the ways this is how it always is. Change is always hard and miraculous and hard again. Parenting is always a leap into the unknown with crossed fingers and full hearts. Children grow, but not always according to plan. And families with secrets don't get to keep them forever. So here's a good story about secrets um, and just about how this little guy's choices in life and his predispositions, um, you know, how they impact the family and, and how the family decides to deal with it and, and what becomes of that. So this is well worth a read if you get, uh, you know, buy the book, get it from the library, or if you get Kindle Unlimited, definitely choose this um, as one of your 20 selections. So really happy to have the opportunity today to show you the other 10 selections that I made from Kindle Unlimited. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you didn't see yesterday's video with the first 10, go back and take a look. It'll be linked in the description of this video. Um, if you did enjoy this, click like and subscribe. I always appreciate your support. I also have a um, wish list at the bottom of each video description um, that shows books that I would love to have. So if you um, are inclined to give me a book that I can read and review on the channel, I will absolutely give you a shout out here. So um, I will be back later this week with individual book reviews, with a list of books that are coming out this week in April. So the April 11th releases that I'm excited about and a few surprises. So I hope I will see you and we will talk more books soon. Thanks. Bye.